fractional reserve banking. Back in the day, people would trade real items back and forth um, so they could get what they need. So if I have sugar and I want to buy a boat, that could end up being difficult without money existing. So say the guy that had the boat for sale didn't want sugar. He needed apples. Then I'd have to take my sugar, go trade for apples, and then take the apples and go trade that to the guy with the boat. And by the way, it'd be a lot of sugar and a lot of apples to do something like that. So obviously that'd be a pain. So what happened is people started using gold and silver as the um, medium for trade and exchange um, in the local economies. And uh, that got to be a pain after a while too because then you're lugging around gold and silver all the time and it was a pain if you, you know. So uh, goldsmiths decided that they'd start storing people's gold for them in exchange for a small fee. So if I had 100 ounces of gold, I'd take it to a goldsmith. He'd give me a receipt for 100 ounces and then I could go take that out into the marketplace and get the things I needed, food, clothes, whatever, uh, with that receipt. Um, as that was a lot easier than going back to the goldsmith with my receipt, getting physical gold, then taking that gold out, getting my bread, my clothes, whatever, and then taking what I had left or what I had exchanged for back to the gold and getting a new receipt when I could just, everyone could just swap receipts back and forth. So that's what happened. People started swapping receipts back and forth. And the banker uh, or goldsmith got smart and uh, realized that he was sitting on all this gold all the time. And that unless everyone came in at one time with their receipts to physically pick their gold up, um, he could actually make loans, you know, put more paper out into the economy, charge interest on it, and he was basically creating money for himself. And um, so that's what happened. He, uh, he started issuing receipts um, out, and so there was actually became more receipts out in circulation than there was gold in the vault, and that was the start of fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking still goes on today. The Federal Reserve, it's about a 10% requirement that banks have to sit on. So if you go um, deposit a thousand dollars into your local checking account, the bank's going to sit on maybe hundred, and they're going to make a new loan for nine hundred, and then they're going to charge whatever percent interest rate. I mean, right now at a good interest rate on a house or whatever, you're looking at maybe five percent. So what are they paying you? Maybe one or two percent if you're lucky. So you can see where the the banks are making the money, and then on top of that, um, the money it it keeps going. So if I go deposit a hundred dollars into the bank, the bank's going to hold ten. Make a new loan for ninety and make that make interest on that ninety. Now, when that person deposits the ninety, um, they hold nine and deposit eighty one. So now they've created ninety plus eighty one. That's one hundred and seventy one dollars of money that they're charging interest on, off of your initial deposit of a hundred dollars, and that's insane. And that's just after two transactions. So you can see when they pump six hundred billion dollars into the com com you know, economy, like they did last week. $600 billion goes out, gets deposited, 10% gets held on to, 90% gets created. Of that 90%, 10% gets deposited again, they create 90% of that again. And it, it gets huge and huge and huge until eventually um, that zeroes out and the money that has to be held in the reserve is um, all of the original money's bat bent back and it gets to zero and now they, they, the fractional reserve's expired and then they just pump more money into the economy is what they do, I guess, these days. So anyways, you can see how that could create a problem because it's just um, basically manipulating uh, manipulating money. And there's only so much good value in the world. So if they actually have more money in circulation than goods and services to trade back and forth, it creates a huge imbalance. And that's basically what we're looking at today. And not only that, which that is a huge problem, but we're the problem we're actually looking at is they create with fractional reserve banking they created so much money out out in circulation that doesn't even exist that the interest just the interest on that money got bigger than we can even produce, and so that's pretty insane to think about. It's like the country has an interest only loan and we can't even pay just the interest on it now. So. On, and an op I mean, how do we keep operating when they can't give us any more debt because they've already given us more debt than we can afford to, to pay on anymore? It's just absolutely insane.